We have in our front yard a number of crosses, white crosses representing more than 50 million children aborted in our country over the last, uh, since Roe versus Wade over the last many years. It's a reminder to us that the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, all life is sacred. All life is treasured by God. And that we who serve the kingdom, belong to the kingdom, we too profess the sanctity of life. This past Friday night, we were invited to go to the cathedral in Louisville and join the March for Life, just as it's happening in Washington, D.C. So we had our own local group joining in this march. So we were going with a number of our youth. I was going to drive, but before I left, I got a phone call. It was one of our elders. Um, his family called and said he needed to be anointed, that he was uh, nearing death. And so I decided that I need to go by there. And it took a little longer than what we were expecting, and I'm normally running a little bit right on the uh, clock anyway, you know. But I said, you know, you got to do what God calls you to do. And so the youth joined me, and we went in the room, and we all prayed. And when we came out driving, I said, you know, the march for life is from the cradle to the grave, from our beginning here on earth to our beginning in heaven. So we have to respect and honor that life, and that's exactly what we were doing from the beginning to the, the beginning. And so as I was driving, um, pulled up to the cathedral, the procession was coming right out of the doors. I said, hop out. I did stop, hop out. They got right in line, right where Ellen Sprigg was and our youth were in. I parked the car, walked across the street and joined them, just like a plan. God has a plan, and if you follow it, it's amazing how that could come together. And we walked to the courthouse, and walked around. It's pretty cold, still pretty cold. Um, but we prayed at the different spots, came to the place where Thomas Merton had uh, come one day. He was at a doctor's office. And on 4th and, it was Walnut at that time, now Muhammad Ali, 4th and Walnut, there's a plaque there. There he had a vision a vision as he looked at people, he said, they don't know, do they? That the glory of God shines in every one of these. They're shining like the sun. You see, that's how God sees us and our life. He sees us as precious, as sharing in his glory. And that's why we don't belong to the world. We live in the world but we don't belong to the world because the world is passing away. The world is passing away. I don't know how long it's going to take. Could be some millions of years. I don't know what the timeline is. Could be sooner. I know in Hawaii... There was a threat, wasn't it, of annihilation. It'd be the end of that part of the world, wouldn't it? You see, we don't belong to the world. We live in the world, but we don't belong to it. We belong to the kingdom of God. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Now, Jonah, we heard about Jonah today. 
He was one man, wasn't he? Called by God, though, to preach about repentance. What difference does one person make? John the Baptist was one person preached repentance, coming of the kingdom. He was imprisoned and executed, but he's remembered today differently than Herod was and is. Twelve apostles, fishermen, tax collector, zealot, what difference can they, could they make? We see them right here, don't we? We look up to them because they serve the kingdom of God most unto their own death. You see, what difference do you and I make? We're just one person. But with the power of God, each of us make a difference. Each of us has a, an effect upon the world. And with God's grace, we can participate in the kingdom. Because if you're not connected to the kingdom then what are we connected to? And is it going to pass away? So, Super Bowl of Caring, reaching out to the, the hungry in our neighborhood, doing a march for life, room in the inn. You know, Margaret Mary and I went to the room in the inn this past week. Hard to get that out of my head. I think about, you know, the homeless are faceless people, nameless people for the most part. But I know the faces and the names of some of our homeless in our community and the sacredness of their life. What difference can one person make? All the difference in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 